Okay, we're going to start this video off with this little picture. I hope you can read it clearly, but this is for Dan from Trimmers. Um, some people are just arrogant as hell, and based on the video that, <clears throat> that he put out the other day um, on his new job, this pertains to that, and I thought he'd get a kick out of that. So uh, if you haven't seen that video, go watch his, um, and you'll know exactly what this is in reference to. This is for you, buddy. All right, so here we go. That is the shell from the Salter. It was soft, rotted out, destroyed. So I decided to buy a new one. You guys know me. I like to build everything, but with all the bends in it and the time I had, I found one online. It was cheaper. I'm like, I'm just going to buy this damn thing, um, and you will see that here in a second. The pictures I threw in here of the actual prices I paid on eBay because I knew people would ask, and I figured we could just cut that right out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there you go. Paid 120 bucks for it. Came complete, just how you see it there. Only it doesn't have the bottom plate. I don't know why it doesn't come with them, but it doesn't. So I had to make my own. No big deal. I took a piece of sheet metal I had left over from the fenders on the dually that I cut out of the inside of them. Uh, put it on there, and I put um, tech screws in to hold it in, and I siliconed all around the inside before I put the lid on, and then around each one of the bolts, and then I cleaned that up afterwards uh, before I put it on, but just so you guys can see what I did there. Um, coming up next, this is the motor and the gearbox. It still worked, but you see how crappy and roughed up it looked, and I figured since I'm doing all this, I might as well do it the right way from the start, and uh just go ahead and replace it. So that's what I did. I kept this as a spare. I'm going to see if I can't rebuild that thing anyway. A buddy of mine's good at rebuilding uh, electric motors, things like that, gearboxes. So um, we might go through it and see if we can rebuild it. I'll keep it on the shelf as a backup. But there's the one I bought, 235 bucks. I had it in three days um, complete. So we uh, we put that in there. And like I said, you get to see what I paid for it and the exact one that I bought. I hope these pictures are coming up clear. Um, and this is the vibrator motor I bought for it. Uh, 200 pounds of force. This It's pretty extreme. You'll see it here in a minute in the video. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's the stuff that I bought for it. That's the condition of it. <clears throat> and now it's good to go. Yeah, oh, this uh, repairing stuff just doesn't come without uh, without injury. I was holding a wrench uh, up against a half-inch plate of steel, which I should have known better. Uh, my buddy had an impact gun on the other side. Well, it broke free, and it smashed all my fingers, well, two of my fingers. Um, really not as bad as it looked, but uh, here you go. Okay, here it is. This is the Salter, and there it is going. I have it set at 40 on the control. This box is the whole new box that I put on. There's the uprights. I didn't paint them yet, but I welded new pieces down and welded new pieces down the back side of it to strengthen all that up. There's the bar, light bar put on. It's wired right into my reverse lights. Um, full LED, just like the long one that's across the top of the front that you guys saw before. Um, it is the swing out type, so I just pull that pin and that pin and the whole salter swings right out so I can still use the tailgate. Um, in the mount, this piece here was a hollow bar all the way down. It was seized in there. I had to heat it up, pound it out. I cut it in pieces, pounded it out. And this is a solid steel piece of one inch pry bar. I made a whole new one, cut it to the right size, welded the top on there so I can bolt it right to the mount. Um, the top just unclips like this. Um, that's a rack there for smashing bags in there when you get uh, salt mount, rock salt and stuff that hardens up. I don't know if you can see down in there, but the spinner's going. You can see the plate in the back. I cut that plate and I ground all the edges down smooth ran bolts through with lock nuts on it um, and that's for the vibrator um, let's see if I can show that to you the vibrator sits right back there that's it right there I bolted it right through there um, but I put that plate on because putting a plate on the inside like that if you order a kit it comes with that plate but putting a plate on the inside like that will help keep it from cracking so much. That vibrator has 200 pounds of force. Uh, it's pretty extreme. But like I said, this is set on 40. Um, 
all I did was took the uh, controls. There's the control box. I mounted it right there. Um, I still got to mount the switch. That's the switch for the vibrator. Oh, uh, you'll probably hear that thing. Listen. It's pretty extreme, pretty extreme, but as you can see, that's on 40. It's got your power, your blast, which takes it right to 99. Um, there's the dial to put it on whatever I want, um, which 40 is about what I'll run it on. Um, but that's it, guys.